Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California. If you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, I know, the new look is gonna take some getting used to. This video is a revised and updated version of my How to Deadlift video that I posted in March 2017, over five years ago. In that video, I taught you the five-step deadlift setup that I learned when I was a starting strength coach. Since then, I've learned some new tips and cues, and I've developed an eye for certain things after working with billions and billions of lifters here at Untamed Strength, as well as at seminars alongside the Barbell Medicine crew. The deadlift is an excellent compound exercise that primarily strengthens your legs, back, and grip, along with a bunch of other muscles. The deadlift is not a movement reserved for powerlifters and heavy lifting gym rats only. Anyone and everyone from the casual gym goer to a competitive athlete can reap the benefits of the barbell deadlift. Before we dive in, I feel it's necessary for me to mention some of the myths that loom over the deadlift like a black cloud because I often find myself clearing the bad reputation that surrounds the deadlift. And me and the deadlift are tight, so I take offense to that. Maybe you yourself are feeling a bit hesitant to start deadlifting because you've heard things like, the deadlift is dangerous. The deadlift is bad for your back. The risk to reward ratio is just not worth it. Or maybe you've even heard, the barbell deadlift is not for beginners. The deadlift is not bad for your back. In fact, deadlifting will strengthen your back. Regularly performing deadlifts will only make you a stronger, more resilient, and more durable individual inside the gym and out. The deadlift is not any more dangerous than a pickup game of basketball. Nothing wrong with basketball. Many studies have actually shown the incidence of injuries in powerlifting, which is a test of maximum squat, bench press, and deadlift, is the same, sometimes lower, than other sports like soccer, jogging, track and field, alpine skiing, American football, wrestling. And this is comparing powerlifting to other sports. Powerlifters are often trying to push the limits to increase their one rep max deadlift. If you're just a casual gym goer who wants to build some muscle, and create more physical independence, you're probably not pushing the deadlift to the intensity and frequency that powerlifters are. So yes, there is some risk of injury associated with nearly any form of physical activity, but completely avoiding that and being sedentary comes with an even longer list of harmful risks. Relatively speaking, no. Deadlift is not more dangerous when compared to other forms of physical activity. You might have also been told that the deadlift is not for beginners. This is also not true. There is no prerequisite strength or mobility needed to perform a deadlift. If picking up a barbell nine inches off the ground is too low, you can prop a barbell up to 12 inches, 15 inches, 18 inches off the ground. Whatever height is required to meet a lifter's individual needs. If a 45 pound, 20 kilo barbell is too heavy, they make 15 pound, seven kilo training barbells. You could use a hollow 25 pound axle bar. I've used a plastic PVC pipe set up in a squat rack before. Range of motion is scalable, weight is scalable. Now, it's time to teach you how to deadlift in five steps. This is John. John is gonna demonstrate the five step deadlift setup. Step number one. Stand with your shins one to two inches away from the barbell. Do not move the barbell. Step number two, bend over at the waist and place your hands on the bar just outside of your legs. Do not move the barbell. Step number three, bend your knees until your shins touch the barbell. Do not move the barbell. Step number four, feel heavy in your hands. Pull the slack out of the barbell. Do not move the barbell. Step number five, Drag the barbell up your legs. Let's break these steps down and discuss each more in depth. Step number one, shins one to two inches away from the barbell. Before setting up to the barbell, let's discuss stance width. The preferred hand width is shoulder width apart, hands and arms hanging right below your shoulder joints, parallel with each other. If your hands are shoulder width apart, your feet need to be narrower than shoulder width. Also, point your toes out slightly. More on this later. Placing your shins one to two inches away from the bar will ensure the barbell starts over the middle of your foot, not over your toes, not over your heels. This entire setup essentially places the barbell over the middle of your foot where you are in good balance and then positions your nice skeleton work. in a way oh, that allows dang. you to pull the barbell in a straight vertical line against your body. Step number two, place your hands on the bar. Do not move the barbell! Moving the barbell will render step one pointless. Always set up to the barbell. Don't set the barbell up to you. When you bend over to place your hands on the barbell, think about bending at the waist, 
not squatting down with your knees. Push your hips back and let your back round over if it wants to. Step number three, bend your knees. Put your knees inside of your arms with your shins touching the barbell. Do not move the barbell! Let your knees and shins come towards the barbell. Pointing your toes out like I mentioned earlier will guide your knees right inside of your arms. Once your shins touch the barbell, stop. Do not continue to bend your knees and push the barbell away. Do not move the barbell. This step is very important because it's going to set up your hip height. If you followed steps one and two, step three should put the front of your knees flush with the front of your arms. This is the correct amount of bend in your legs and it's the correct height for your hips. So rather than guessing how high or how low your hips need to be, you can instead use your knees inside of your arms as a reference point for a good starting position. If your knees push beyond your arms, your hips are most likely too low. Doing this can push the barbell away from your body. Do not move the barbell! Or they are now in the way of the bar path and you'll likely clip them on the way up. If the weight is heavy enough, you'll notice your hips rise before the barbell even leaves the floor. It is difficult to pick up a heavy barbell if your hips are too low. This puts your shoulders behind the barbell and consequently, almost all of your body weight is now behind the barbell. If your knees are inside of your arms and your hips are in the correct starting position, your shoulders are actually in front of the barbell. I'd say armpits directly above the barbell when viewing from the side. And conversely, if your knees are behind your arms, your hips are probably too high and you're not gonna get as much leg drive as you could be. This might also put your shoulders too far over the bar. In my last How to Deadlift video, step three was shins. Now it's knees. Some people hear the cue shins and simply push their shins forward into the barbell, shifting their weight onto their toes. Wrong. Stay balanced over midfoot. Equal pressure on toes and heels. With the cue knees, think about using this step to bend your knees and place them inside your arms while simultaneously sinking your hips into position. Step number four, feel heavy in your hands. Do not move the barbell! Both steps three and four I learned from Austin Baraki while I was being coached by him. This one was a game changer for me. Feeling heavy in your hands means you are pulling tight against the barbell. Some refer to this as pulling the slack out of the barbell. You'll hear clanking of the barbell sleeves inside of the iron plates. That is a helpful audible cue to let you know you are pulling tight against the barbell, along with actually feeling some weight in your hands. As you are feeling heavy in your hands, think about lengthening your arms. Squeezing your chest out and or trying to flatten your back is also something you can emphasize while pulling the slack out of the bar and feeling heavy in your hands. The old cue I used to use was chest. Sticking your chest out is a perfectly acceptable cue if that helps you feel heavy in your hands. I encountered a lot of people who would stick their chest out but failed to put any weight in their hands before the pull. And there are many people who deadlift without putting too much effort into sticking their chest out. And this is one reason why I don't cue everyone to do it. Some, but not all. Cues are just words used to get a lifter to do something. If saying chest out helps a lifter do something I want them to do, then it's a good cue. I just don't emphasize it as much as I used to. Some people overemphasize this chest out cue, causing their back to overextend, which just isn't necessary. Many people believe that your back must be flat as a board when you pick something up. The truth is, your back be bending whether you think it is or not. Rather than thinking about making your back as flat as a board, I would rather you think about making your back stiff as a board. Meaning, whatever position your back is in before lifting the barbell, brace hard and try to hold that position throughout the lift. Mobility, limb length, anthropometry, posture, individual spinal curvature, and personal preference are all going to determine what your back actually looks like. When I'm teaching a beginner how to deadlift, I want them to emphasize keeping their back tight because those are the muscles that we are trying to train. You're trying to keep your back rigid so the force from your feet can travel up your legs, through your tight back, down your arms, and into the barbell. Pulling the slack out of the barbell and feeling heavy in your hands will help you tighten up before executing the movement. Step number five, drag the barbell up your legs. Step number three, place your shins against the barbell. 
Keep the barbell against your shins as you feel heavy in your hands and drag the barbell against the front of your legs throughout the entire pull. You might feel your lats contracting as they pull the barbell in towards your body. Along with dragging the barbell up the front of your legs, you should also think about pushing your feet into the floor, making an effort to drag the barbell up while at the same time pushing your feet down will result in a powerful and smooth deadlift. Breathing. I would suggest inhaling on step four. Take a big breath and brace as if you were gonna be punched in the midsection at the same time that you pull the slack out and feel heavy in your hands. Hold your breath as you pull. Most people prefer to exhale at the top of the deadlift. Lockout. While you're up there, at the top of the deadlift, pause to show you have control. Make sure your hips and knees are both locked out, shoulders back, chest proud. You do not need to excessively lean back or hyperextend your back at the top. Lowering the barbell. When you are ready to lower the barbell, you can let gravity do most of the work here. Think of lowering the barbell as a controlled drop while keeping your hands on the bar. You don't have to go super slow here. The exact speed that you lower the bar is personal preference. Since you pick the bar up in a straight vertical line, it's best to lower it down the same path. Start by pushing your hips back and letting the barbell slide down your thighs. Don't actively bend your knees until the barbell passes them. By bending your knees at the start or just too early, you're creating a ramp for the barbell and it's gonna end up several inches over your toes when it hits the ground. Think about hips lowering the barbell down to the same place you picked it up. After your first rep, you don't have to perform steps one and two because your feet are already on the ground and your hands are already on the barbell. From here, it is okay to move the barbell if you need to. You might not have threaded the needle and placed the barbell exactly where it started and that's okay. So with your hips high, legs fairly straight, roll the barbell back to one to two inches away from your shins and then perform steps three, four, and five. Grip. There will come a time when the weight is too heavy for your hands to hold with a double overhand grip. That is fine and normal. It just means your back and legs are getting strong. It does not mean your grip strength is severely lacking. There is nothing wrong with you. It's time to do one of three things. Number one, use a mixed grip. One hand overhand or pronated, the other underhand or supinated. Usually your dominant hand stays pronated, non-dominant hand becomes supinated, but you can decide for yourself based on comfort. Number two, use a hook grip. Instead of wrapping your fingers around the bar, thumbs on top of the fingers, you will wrap your thumb around the bar, fingers over your thumb. This grip allows both hands to be pronated, which is preferred by some. It can be uncomfortable and it takes some getting used to. If you have small hands, short fingers, or thick palms, it might not work no matter how bad you want it to. Number three, lifting straps. If you have no plans to ever compete in the sport of powerlifting, go ahead and strap up. If you do plan on competing in a powerlifting meet one day, using straps for the majority of your deadlifts is fine, but you need to practice option one or two at some point because you are not allowed to use straps in competition. These five clear, concise, repeatable steps should be helpful for you if you're learning how to deadlift for the first time or if you're just trying to figure things out. It can also be useful for those of you who are teaching someone new how to deadlift for the first time. But realize that this is not deadlift gospel. This is not the only way to deadlift. This is just a good place to start. You might prefer a wider stance, a narrower stance, a wider grip, a narrower grip. You might prefer to blend some of these steps together. Some people like to set up and pull very quickly and explosively. Some people like to be more slow and methodical when they set up. All of that is fine. This is just a good place to start and it's how I teach it. Additionally, these five steps need not be obsessed over. It's okay to be not very good at this when you first start. You will get better with practice. You will learn what feels best for you the longer you do it. You don't need to be overly critical of yourself. You don't need to worry about getting these five steps perfect. You don't need to record every single set and obsess over minor details that are discussed in this video. That's kind of the beauty of free weights. You're standing on your own two feet, trying to maintain balance while you move your body through space against a heavy resistance. It's okay if things are not perfect. It's okay if things don't feel perfect. They don't need to be. Thanks for watching and always remember, Train on time!